is our last night in this apartment and I am so excited. We undecorated the apartment over the last week and we removed like the removable molding and painted over some areas on the walls. We removed the peel and stick backsplash countertops and floors, which took, some of it was easier than others, but I, once we found like techniques to remove like the gunky stuff after we peeled up the floors. It went by pretty quickly. Some things worked better than others, so I definitely wanted to share some tips that we found helpful, um, just in case you're in a, a similar situation. So I'll take you back over the course of the last week and show you a few of the undecorating things that we did. We are starting in the kitchen because the kitchen has all of the peel and stick countertops, floors, um, probably did the backsplash. Yeah. We switched out the handles. Earlier. We did switch out the hardware and we're gonna put those cabinet uh, doors back on. What else? Uh, I think that's it. I think, yeah, that's I mean, it's a lot, but uh, we'll get started. Look at that. Right off. Okay, wow, there's no residue. Nothing. That's amazing. So this is like a Formica countertop material that they use as the backsplash. It's so nice that it's not leaving anything. Wow, that saves so much time. This was not stuck on drywall. If it's already on top of other tile or other countertop material, I think you'll be fine. All right. Um, it's hard because you have to find a little piece to grab, but yeah. once you get it, you get a big enough piece to grab onto, it's not bad. How's that Where's that there? goo gone? This one's definitely going to leave some residue. We're going to have to scrub it. Oh, yeah. The goo gone's underneath the sink. Okay, so we ordered some goo gone. It removes like, you know, glue and goo. Goo, stickers, <laughs> adhesive, so we'll definitely have to use that for these countertops because it's looking like these are hard to come off. I don't need to have a lot of arm strength. This is super sticky. Like, this is strong. What you talking about? What's up, Beans? What's oh. up, Beans? This is where I'm at. <laughs> What's up, this? Oh, shoot. We have to get back there for that. Man, that's how I love it. That's how I love it. So, we are, I'm going to scrub it a little bit first, and then we're going to scrape all of the adhesive off. I would recommend like a metal blade as opposed to this plastic one. It's not really getting the job done. The issue we have right now is that we can't find our blade holder, the yeah. handle thing that. But as you can see, the adhesive comes right up with this. Okay, so this is what I would recommend using a plastic scraper that holds a blade. We lost our plastic scraper, so I'm trying to find it, but that is the best way to get this up. The goal for today in the apartment is to remove, is to really finish these floors. It left so much sticky stuff and it was very hard for, um, I just, I had to do some research and find some better techniques to remove it. So I found out that baking soda and water is the best way to get the sticky residue off the floor. So first I'm going to take up all the floors. It's gonna be very, very sticky. Um, this section actually is clean. I cleaned a lot of this section last um, couple days ago, but there's still a lot of sticky areas and still a lot of floors to pick up. So we're going to try that. And then um, we'll almost be done with the kitchen. We have to add another cabinet door back I'm just gonna use these gloves 
because I just don't want to get sticky stuff on my hands. I'm not really in the mood to do that. The angle that you pull it up is more important than using the hair dryer. So I'm going to attempt to use it without the hair dryer first. If I need to use a hair dryer, I'll get it out, but it is kind of like a hassle trying to get that out. But I think as long as I pull it up, uh, if I pull it up from behind, it, it makes a weird angle. So I kind of need to pull it up from in front. I feel like this is not a good angle. I'm like showing my butt. <sighs> Woo. All right, got it up all in one piece. Didn't even use the hair dryer, so I think as long as you pull it from in front of it as opposed to behind it, that makes a big difference. I did use a little scraper to get the beginnings of it up. What? I'm actually gonna go ahead and put some water on the floor just to make it a little bit less sticky while I'm walking around here. I'm going to the grocery store really quickly. It's right across the street and I'm getting more baking soda because that seems to be working really, really well. Just baking soda, water, and a scrubber brush. to another window we're actually almost done with this but as you can see it does leave some residue so but it's a quick fix we have been scraping it off with an exacto blade and Boom. it gets it off real quick super fast so what are you using so what we're going to do is we're going to deconstruct this wall here it should be pretty easy because we just connected it with velcro um, and command strips, so they should come off. Oh, look at that, pretty easy. And then what we'll do with these, we'll just you know, take them off, boom, nothing wrong with the wall.
Okay, so the molding in the other bedroom was much more difficult to remove because I used a totally different type of tape. I do not recommend using this tape. I'll put a picture here. So, so hard to remove. We had to use a hair dryer and then it ripped off some of the drywall. So I definitely recommend either command strips or the Scotch brand of double-sided mounting tape, or you could always just go the nail route and patch up a few holes when you are done. The process of filling holes because there are quite, um, there's not too many, I don't know, this gallery wall in our living room had, I mean, we definitely did not use command strips for this one, like we did in our bedroom, so we're filling it in. Yeah, so basically what you wanna do when you're filling in one of these holes is just take a little drywall sander, just sand down, and make it smooth. What you're also doing is you're also making a little bit of an indention in the wall so the, the spackling's gonna sit flush. There you go, nice and smooth. So then what you do is take some drywall spackling you get a uh, trowel here, so I get all in into the hole, push it back in there, push it back in there. So it's pink right now, but it'll dry white. And what you'll do once it's dry, you'll sand it again, make sure you get all the excess spackle off, and you paint over it, and there you go, your hole's filled. So hopefully that was a little bit helpful for anyone else in the same boat. Um, I know some of it, there was a time when I was like, oh my gosh, how are we gonna get the sticky stuff off the floor? But once we found baking soda, it was like such, it made it so much easier. So hopefully you watch this before you do that. TJ's unscrewing some brackets off the wall. We're still like, we are working until like the the second the movers come tomorrow. We still have quite a bit to do before they come. So we will see you guys at the new apartment. And I can't wait. So thank you again for watching this and thanks for subscribing and we'll see you next time.